let's erase something here. So B, uh, we want to find the total potential at 1, 5 meters. So we simply do the uh, similar thing to what we just did for the y-axis, right? You find the distance, so that's going to be the V total is going to give you KQ1 over R1 plus KQ2 over R2. So if I want to find the total uh, potential at any point, again, it's easier to do this than to find the electric field at any point. You don't need to worry about components. Right? So you simply do uh, 2 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by square root of. So what's the distance? Um, uh, the distance from 1, 5 meter, where is that? Let's go back to my original picture here. 1, 5 meter, so here's 5. So I need that distance. So this distance is going to be 1 and 3, so that's 4. So that's a triangle, uh, 1 and 4, so that's 4 and 5, right? So the distance is square root of that, this ring right here. So square root of 16 plus 25, and the other distance, the other triangle is going to be uh, 4 minus 1, that's 3, and 5. So, so 2 times 10 to the minus 4 over, that's going to be 4. 4, 5, so square root of 16 plus 25 minus, uh, <clears throat> you know, I did it opposite. The, the two charges over here, 2.2 millicoulombs is over here, and uh, negative 0.5 millicoulombs is over here. So I need the 2 divided by, this is square root of 25 plus 9, and this is square root of 25 plus 16. Okay. So 2 square root of 25 plus uh, 9 minus 5 times 10 to the minus 4 square root of 16 plus 25. So you get V total equals uh, 9 times 10 to the fifth, so 2 divided by square root of 34 minus 5 divided by square root of uh, 41. So what is that? So pretty high voltage. So negative, we could say uh, 390 um, kilovolts. In terms of kilovolts, 10 to the third, right? Negative 390 kilovolts. So that's a huge voltage. And again, that point is going to be a part of a ellipse. It's not just by itself. It's going to be part of an equipotential surface. It's going to be like this. Uh, Let's see, let me see if I drew that right. The two was at the, the 
the 2 was at the 4, 0, and the 5 was at the negative 3, 0. Where was the potential uh, 0? Yeah, so it's going to be like this. I believe it should be like this probably, yeah. So 1, 5, let's say here's 1, 5. It's going to look like this. It's going to be part of an ellipse. And all the points along that ellipse are going to be uh, negative 390 kilovolts. You know what? Something tells me the lips should go that way. Let me see here. So if I draw this right, here's what the potential was zero. Should you guys think the ellipse should go this way or should it go this way? It looks like it's, see if it goes this way, no, I don't think so, no, no, no. It should go this way. And at some point you're going to get uh, more and more negative. Mm. The electric field due to this is going to equal... That's a good question to, uh, to consider here. Draw the equal potential surfaces of this one. You have positive, you have negative. Um, potential is. Oh, OK, like this. Maybe it's a bigger ellipse. It goes like that. Hmm. closer to this than to this. Yeah, you know what? It should do this. I got it. It should go around this one. All the, all the negative equipotential surfaces should go around this one. And the positive equipotential surfaces should go around that one. OK? So it should look like this here. Uh, it's probably going to be a huge ellipse. It's going to go like that. It's off the board. Then it goes, then it goes like that. And then, then over here, it's going to go like this. Huge, again, huge ellipses. It's going to go like that. Yeah, that's what it should. So all the negative equipotential surfaces should be centered on this one. All the positive equipotential surfaces should be centered on that one. Kind of like the hill valley example, right? Hill, and then you have a valley. In this case, the valley is much uh, deeper than the hill. So all the negative heights should be centered on the, the valley. And then all the positive ones should be centered on that. Mm. So when you think about it a little bit more, it's not that, 